Nothing. About to go on stage in five minutes. Nice. Right. Don't yeah. eat that, Jim. You ready? Yeah. <laughs> All right. I was over at Rick Rubin's house, and he said, if this guy was 20 years old, he'd be a superstar. I've been an editor for 47 years. I've done a few music videos, um, mainly in the last 14 or 15 years for Mike Riley. Michael O'Brien and I went to Shuba's for a show, and blown away you know i just saw the band and i was like these guys are phenomenal why are they not bigger why are they not national act well, it's those lies you tell makes me want to be a lover there's a childlike perspective that he has which is refreshing and uh pitiful and riley has, you know this ridiculous amount of footage and you know it grew yearly so uh, he was always having people try to cut things together, you know, for what end no one really knew. So one day I said, let me, let me have a shot at this. And so I spent a day on it and I showed it to Mike Schmiedler and he loved it. And just kept going to his shows and, you know, stayed a fan of him and his music, stayed in touch, would continue to see him, you know, over the years. Yeah, she saw me singing at the company picnic. I said, I see you writing down the names of the strikers when they pick it. And Mike Schmiedler is the one who spent the better part of a year trying to convince Ike to, to do a film. So I wrote a full treatment, multiple pages, pitched him. And I'm like, I think we should just do a documentary on you. And I think we should do independent so that we can have control of it. And he was like, I don't think that that interesting like what is this documentary going to be about I'm like it's about you it's about you your family your songs like your life man you are fascinating first i loved the song and then when i realized what it was about it was like he took this awful moment this this horrifying kind of end of uh, a friend's life and found a way to imbue it with, with joy and affirmation of that life however troubled he wrote this song about a local DJ helping to rescue a family handcuffed at O'Hare Airport. Hey, Mr. DJ, help me break her chains. I'm happy to hear that Stephen King was a fan of Bull Cutter. Get your bowl cutters and meet me down in baggage claim. You know, the hardest thing in independent filmmaking is the money. And the irony in this case was that I spent more time getting Ike on board than I did getting the money on board. I once calculated that I've been to close to 2,000 concerts, and I can't compare seeing Ike Riley at his log cabin at a ticketed show, really to anything. The investor that we got on board for the film were like, yeah, this is a great idea, totally agree with you, um, let's, let's do it. Which I think also just shows you, like his fans are rabid. So those of us who know about him are like, this guy is the best flavor of any flavor in, you know, the ice cream shop, and I can't get enough of it. I'm hearing from people I haven't heard from in years saying how much they love this film and how much they love him. And people who aren't necessarily into, you know, his kind of music or music period, but they just love the story of him and his family. I, I cannot appreciate enough that the people who shot for Ike in the past and, and we were able to use all that archive. He's never sold himself out. I think he's the best American songwriter working right now. He's an artist that the world deserves to hear. Oh, 